So you have low back pain and it seems to disrupt your sleep. You're probably wondering, is it my mattress? You probably had both good and bad nights on different types of mattresses. So you're wondering, is there something there? Some relationship between your pain and your mattress. So what do you do? You ask Dr. Google and you find out one of two things generally. One is a firm mattress is best for people with low back pain. That's a, a common belief. And the other one is after maybe 30 minutes on Google, you discover 20 different products and they all have a patent pending and they all seem to solve all your back problems. So you kind of leave a little confused. Is it firm? Do I need some sort of special mattress that was created by astronauts in space? In daily practice, healthcare providers are often asked to give their opinion on different characteristics of mattresses and to see if there's like a best fit for people who have, who have low back pain. And in a survey of orthopedic surgeons, about 95% of them believed that a mattress did play a role in the management of somebody who has low back pain. And about 76% of them recommended a firm mattress. So what does the evidence tell us? This is an important topic because people with chronic low back pain do seem to be more sensitive to the firmness of a mattress than people who don't have that kind of pain. And while we don't think mattresses cause low back pain, we have seen some evidence to suggest that uh, the type of mattress may be relevant in the course of someone's low back pain episode. This seems reasonable because you're essentially spending a third of your life sleeping on a mattress. So let's review the evidence. In a 2003 study published in The Lancet, 313 adults who had chronic, non-specific low back pain, remember this makes up the majority of low back pain cases, roughly 85% or more, uh, these individuals also complained of back pain while they were sleeping. So the authors randomly assigned these 313 individuals to different types of mattresses that were varying firmness. Uh, and they, they looked at a scale developed by the European Committee for Standardization, and they rated the firmness on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 was the firmest, 10, 10 was the softest. These authors performed some assessments at baseline, which was when they started the study, and at 90 days after the study was completed, and they were measuring improvements in pain while lying in bed, pain when rising from the bed, and they looked at a disability measure. Here's what they found. At 90 days, patients with medium firm mattresses had better outcomes for pain in bed, pain rising from the bed, and disability than patients with firm mattresses. Throughout the study period, Patients with medium firm mattresses also reported less daytime low back pain. Some of the differences in favor of the medium firm mattress were significant and some were not. They were only close to significant. But patients who received the medium firm mattresses were around twice as likely to report improvements than the patients that had firm mattresses. An interesting finding, though not really surprising, was that when people believed the harder mattress was better, maybe they had been told that by Dr. Google or by their healthcare provider, the positive effect of these medium firm mattresses seem to be reduced, but they still seem to do better on the medium firm. This is an important factor and shows that an individual's beliefs about what mattress is best is very likely gonna influence how they respond to that type of mattress. This isn't the only study to favor medium firm mattresses. There's another study published in Applied Ergonomics Journal that was looking at prescribed sleep surfaces had similar results. Although in that study, they were looking at different sleep um, surface types based on conditions and based on pain patterns, um, but they tend to favor medium firm mattresses in that study as well. So what are the takeaway messages? People with chronic non-specific low back pain seem to be more sensitive to the firmness of a mattress than individuals that don't have that kind of pain. Medium firm mattresses may be preferred over firm mattresses, and this change may result in better outcomes such as pain while you're in bed, pain when rising from the bed, reported disability, and less daytime low back pain. But these changes are small. Some are not even considered significant. People's beliefs about the best mattress can also influence how much that mattress seems to affect their low back pain. So if you were just looking for the nuts and bolts, you know, what's a baseline recommendation for individuals with low back pain, you can stop the video here. For the curious learner, if you want to hear a little bit more criticism um, and maybe a little bit of a, a more complete picture on how to interpret all this information, uh, feel free to watch the YouTube video. We can dive a little deeper. So when we're trying to interpret all this information and we're looking at these studies on sleeping surfaces, it's really important to take this stuff into context. There are many, many variables to consider when somebody has chronic nonspecific low back pain. Chronic low back pain in general, in fact. There are a lot of things that can affect the low back pain experience. If we create a story that there has to be a perfect mattress type 
it might be a good thing for sales when we talk about all these fancy things that people are putting into mattresses. But if we don't see a very strong cause and effect relationship between all these little changes that we make to the mattress and, and significant results, then perhaps we should reconsider conveying the message that there has to be a perfect sleeping surface. The story uh, of the sleeping surface may have as large of an impact as the actual surface itself. It's very, I think it's just worth mentioning. You know, there are many pain patterns that can occur as well. So somebody's pain um, is gonna fluctuate significantly oftentimes when they have chronic low back pain, based on the time of day, based on the activities that day, or maybe the activities the day before. And so just freezing time and asking, hey, how are you doing at these different time points? You can imagine if our pain goes up and down and up and down, and we're just asking at these various time points, how are you doing? It's kind of easy to see this may not be a very sensitive measure of someone's experience or how they're really doing. Uh, we may see a significant fluctuation in pain levels just based on the fact that it's going to fluctuate. And so if we try to freeze frame everything and take a snapshot in time, there's, a, there's some criticism that's very, I think it's well worth mentioning there that that may not be a good measure of how to interpret uh, how people are doing. So I, I think that if, if we can keep in mind that oftentimes what we tend to communicate to people seems to have a very profound impact, then we need to really carefully consider how we talk about sleep services. It's a very large cost for somebody to go out and buy a new mattress. And if we're not expecting a significant change, we may wanna consider that when they ask us the question. So I think it's okay to give baseline information. Well, this is what we tend to see. Um, you know, people are a little bit more sensitive to firmness, so we might consider this. But to create the story that somebody's low back pain episode is gonna just become dramatically better uh, just because they buy a mattress, I think we're cutting the, sh the, the, sh the story very short there. And we might wanna shift the focus away from sleeping situations, sleeping surfaces, to activity-based measures, meaning uh, tracking someone's response to activity and how their pain may fluctuate and helping them build a, a bit of a roadmap there to understand the low back pain rather than again just creating the story that well let's let's get you to sleep the perfect position and then everything else just sort of takes care of, it, uh, of itself i think that's what a lot of people think so what i try to do is I, I cover baseline information when i talk to somebody who has low back pain but i also try to shift them in the direction of you know what matters the most and i can i can tell you there's overwhelming evidence to suggest that activity uh, based focus uh, would far outweigh uh, a focus on sleeping surface so if that's the case Try to spend your time where you think it matters the most with people um, so that you can have a larger impact on their health, their health behaviors, the quality of their life um, with, with maybe a more important measure there. So for what that's worth, I hope this was helpful information. Um, and again, I'm trying to bring more context than just you know, hard, soft, you know, medium firmness. I think the story needs to expand beyond that if you're actually interacting with somebody who has low back pain and they're looking to you for your advice. So I hope you enjoyed, thanks.